guys, welcome back. Today's video, I am going to be reviewing the Frozen 2 collection with ColourPop Cosmetics. I am super excited to be reviewing this collection today because I literally just watched Frozen 2 last night and it was so good. Honestly guys, I think it was better than the first one. And the first one was so good, don't get me wrong, I loved it. It's probably one of my favorite Disney movies. I was literally crying throughout the whole movie. It wasn't even a sad part, but I was just like in tears because it was just so cute. Yeah, I'm just like more pumped to review this collection today because I actually just watched the movie and it's all fresh in my brain. The only thing I don't have is the pressed glitters, but as always, I will give you my thoughts on everything else, give you guys some comparisons, swatches, and then you'll see my three looks at the end. So my three looks for this video, um, I actually did the first look just using the Anna palette, second look using the Elsa palette, and then this look is a combination of the two. So that's how we went about today's video. So if you guys are interested in all of that, then just continue watching. So jumping straight into to the review, let's start off with some product info. This is probably the smallest ColourPop times Disney collaboration. Usually the collabs are huge and there's like a bunch of stuff. So I'm really happy that this collection is very small. It's just well put together, everything is straightforward and it's just easy to take in, if you know what I mean. So in the collection, you do have Anna and Elsa. They come with the same thing, but for their own princess. So there is a nine pan eyeshadow palette. This is 15 US dollars. This is $3 more than the usual price for a nine pan. I'm thinking it's just because of the packaging. The packaging is in a cardboard, just like the 12 pans, not like the plastic, like the usual nine pans. So I think the $3 has something to do with maybe the packaging. That's just my assumptions. We have two Lux lipsticks, which are nine US dollars each, two ultra glossy lips which are 8 US dollars each and there is also two glitter gel pots which are 9 US dollars which I did not pick up. But if you do want to get the Elsa kit or the Anna kit it is 38 US dollars and if you want to get the whole collection it is 76 US dollars altogether. So let's start off with the eyeshadow palettes first. So with the Elsa palette you have more cool tones, a little bit more icy but you do have those purple slash plum shades in here as well and then for the Anna palette you do have those purples as well but you also have more warm golden tones so the common factor between the two palettes is definitely the purples but this one is more cool tone this one is more warm tone obviously matching the princess themselves. For the finishes, they are pretty much similar. They almost are laid out the same. You have the press glitter in the middle and then you have the surrounding mattes and metallics. I do think it's a good combination of everything with the mattes and the finishes in both palettes. So there's nothing wrong with that. You get transition shadows, medium tones and darker tones and then obviously your beautiful metallic shadows. My only concerns is first the press glitters. I know Colourpop is not necessarily targeted towards kids but when kids Kids do see a frozen makeup collection for a very affordable price. I feel like parents are willing to buy it for them. I feel like normal ColourPop consumers, we are like a little bit older, we have a bit more common sense, and we know when and when not to play with glitter. If you know yourself, you're not safe with glitter, you probably wouldn't buy the palette or you probably wouldn't use the pressed glitter on your eyes, you know what I mean? But for most parents, they probably have no clue about makeup that there is a pressed glitter that could be harmful to kids it is a little bit I don't know it just doesn't feel right with me so I think that's my first con and then the second con is probably that these shades are pretty generic not generic but I think you can easily dupe it very easily especially the Anna palette don't get me wrong I love this color story and I like the look that I created with it. But I feel like I could have done that with a combination of palettes that I already own. On the other hand, the Elsa palette is a little bit more unique to me. I think a lot of these shadows are super unique that I couldn't compare or dupe to other shades from ColourPop. But if we were to take the glitter part out, I think the Anna palette is a very great palette for like a neutral, warm look for the warm tone girl. But it's something not so unique. I do think the Elsa palette is more unique, but it's not a palette that I see myself like using every single day because this is much more cool tone, more icy. It's not really up my alley if you know what I mean. So I think it really depends on like what you look for in a palette and what kind of tones you like. I don't think these are bad palettes but they aren't like 
extraordinary. But then again, they are following the theme of the princesses, so it's hard to make a palette very unique when you are strongly sticking to a theme. And in saying that, I think they did a really, really great job of portraying the princess. Like, these are definitely Elsa's colors. Like, you can create a purple smoky eye like Elsa wears in the movie. And this is very, very Anna as well. Like, these are just her tones. So they did a good job of representing the princesses. I know that was a little confusing because I was, like, jumping between the two palettes, but hopefully that made sense. Always up to you guys at the end of the day if you want to buy it. That's just kind of like my two cents on it. I like the palettes. I will get my use out of them because I do see myself using these shades in the future. But it's nothing like wow, you know? I think for me, my favorite Disney palette is still It's a Princess thing. So we then have both of the Luxe lipsticks. Anna's Luxe lipstick is called Going North and Elsa's one is called Little Snow. These both are in the creme finish, which I prefer more than the matte, so I love that. I think this is like a really great gift to get like your little niece or daughter because it's just so spot on. However, these are very dupable. So if you already have a lot of the Luxe Lipstick shades, keep watching until my comparisons and then you will see that the similarities are very, very close for both shades. I don't think these are unique shades, but when they are put in a packaging like this and they are titled like, you know, Anna's Lipstick, Elsa's Lipstick, you can't help but think these are Anna and Elsa's lipstick. Honestly, I probably could have done without them just because I feel like the comparisons are so similar. And then we have the ultra glossy lips. Anna's one is called Free Spirit and Elsa's one is called Mythic Journey. So for Anna's one, this is a beautiful, beautiful shade. I see myself wearing this as like an everyday gloss. I mean, I have something kind of similar from ColourPop, but nothing like to actually compare it with. So for me, this is probably the most unique thing out of this collection. It's something that I couldn't dupe. And it is just like a solid gloss and it's great on top of Anna's lipstick as well. It's just a very pretty gloss and I really, really enjoy this. And then we have Elsa's gloss. This one to me is like a gloss I probably will never pick up unless I'm doing like a very specific look that I need a super, super glittery, glittery gloss. I think this is like a gloss that's great for kids. I feel like little girls really love like those ultra glossy glitter gloss. This is packed with glitters and it's packed with like almost chunky glitters so that when you rub your lips together you can feel those glitters. It's not my favorite shade, not my favorite kind of texture and formula. So now to round everything up, honestly everything was great. Nothing was really bad. Besides like the press glitter issue, I think everything else was fun and it really suited the characters and I think they did a, a really good job creating this collection because you could buy the Anna kit and transform yourself into Anna as well as the Elsa kit, you know? If I had to recommend a collection, I probably would go for the Anna kit because it is more wearable and even if you're not trying to transform yourself into Anna, you still can wear these shades and make it super wearable. I think Elsa's collection is a little bit more out there, a little bit more dramatic, especially with the gloss. The lip color is not like my kind of everyday shade. But strictly speaking, my top recommendation would have to be Anna's gloss. And I would say her lipstick as well, going north. That's only if you don't have any of the comparison shades that I'm gonna show you soon. Then I would say this is a beautiful shade. But other than that, the thing that stood out to me the most and the thing that I'm probably gonna use most out of this collection in my everyday life is Anna's gloss in Free Spirit. Let me know what you guys think about the collection let me know what you guys think about the movie. I adored it so much. I think oh, it was such a good movie. But yeah, that pretty much completes my review. We can now move on to the swatches, comparisons, and then my three looks.
To get started with the Anna look, I'm going to start off with the shade Fearless and this is going to be my transition shadow. I'm going to work that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions and you can see that I am blending it quite high up towards my brow bone. So we are just getting a good wash of this color all over our lid space. I'm also taking this on to my lower lash line as well, just sweeping that from the outer corner right to the inner corner. This is going to help balance out the eyes. Next, I am going into the shade Charades and I'm going to work this in the outer third of my eyes. I'm going to first pack on the color there and then I'm going to blend towards the inner part of my crease. You just want the most product at the outer third because we do want this cat eye shape. So placing darker colors at the outer third is going to help achieve that. And again, I am taking this onto my lower lash line as well. I'm just going to use more of a defining brush and really press this up against my bottom waterline. Now I'm going into the shade Scooch In and I am using this shadow wet. I'm going to place that right at the inner third of my eyes and when you place the shadow on, it looks nothing like how it looks in the pan. In the pan, it looks like a cream white with some like pink reflex but when you place it on, you just see a beautiful pink rosy metallic shade. I do think it complements the matte shadows really well so I don't mind that but it was just a surprise putting it on. I'm also going to take that towards the inner corners just to highlight like that area as well. Now I am taking my liquid liner and I'm going to use this to line my lash line. I will then go in with a bit of charade and a bit of a black eyeshadow and just kind of smoke out my wing. I didn't want to create a normal wing just because I wanted this look to be a little bit softer. It kind of turned a little bit more dramatic than I was hoping so I decided to go for a smoky wing rather than a normal wing. When I do my smoky wings I like to blend that in towards the outer corner where it's very dark and heavy. Alright guys, so this is the first look completed. This is my Anna look. For my lashes, I am wearing the Petite Cosmetics Luxe Faux Mink Lashes in the style Fresh. For my lip pairing, I went with the Luxe Lipstick in the shade Going North, which is Anna's Luxe Lipstick shade. I just thought it paired well with it. I didn't want a gloss on my lips, so I went for the lipstick. I also added um, a couple of fake freckles on my cheeks and on my nose just to give me the overall Anna vibe because she does have freckles. But yeah, this completes the first look. Something a little bit more daytime glam for me personally. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this first look. To get started with the Alsa look, I am taking the shade Fire and I'm going to use this as my transition shadow. We're just going to work that straight into the crease using windshield wiping motions to get a really good blend up towards our brow bone. Next, I am taking the shade Spindrift and I'm going to first work this at the outer third of my eyes just to really build up the product there first. And then I'll slowly take that in towards the inner part of my crease because the shadow is super pigmented. You want to work with baby steps first and just build the product up from there. I then take my P. Louise eyeshadow base and I'm going to use this to help cut out my crease. So we are just doing a half cut crease for today's look. So I'm going to place that right at the inner third of my eyes and then bring that up towards my crease area following the natural curve of my eye shape. I like to take a thin paintbrush to really carve out and make the cut crease more precise. And then I will go in with the shade Gale. I am using this shadow wet. I'm going to place that right on top of the P. Louise base and blending it towards the middle part of my lid. Thank you. 
I'm also going to take the shade Cuddle Close and I'm also using this shadow wet as well. I'm literally just going to place that right on top of Gale. It's going to enhance Gale a little bit more, make it a little bit lighter and brighter, which is what we always need for a half cut crease because we do want that light to dark contrast. I'm also taking the shade Hurry. I'm just going to drag that along the crease line just to really enhance that cut crease line and to again enhance our cut crease and really make it stand out. And then I am going into the shade Awakened and I'm going to use this to help diffuse the metallics blend into the mattes by just dabbing where they meet and that's going to help blend all those shadows out together. Now I am taking my liquid liner, I'm going to use this to line my lash line and then my gel liner to create my wing. For cut creases, I feel like creating a wing is just necessary. And now going back into the shade Spindrift, I'm going to wash this all over my lower lash line just to even out the eyes. And then I'm taking my ColourPop Creme Gel Liner in the shade Joyride and I'm going to use this to tight line my entire bottom waterline. And this guys is the final Elsa look. For my lashes today I am wearing the House of Lashes Iconic Lights and for my lip pairing I went with the Luxe Lipstick in the shade Little Snow which is Elsa's Luxe Lipstick. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Elsa look. I tried to embody her as much as I could with my hair. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this second look. Alright, and now for the final look, I am starting off in the Anna palette, taking the shade Wind. This is going to be our transition shadow. I'm just going to sweep that all over my crease area, just to get a good wash of this colour in that area, blending that up towards my brow bone. Taking the shade Charades, I'm going to start packing this onto my lids. Just really building up the color there first and then once you feel like you are happy with the pigmentation on your lid, you can start slowly blending that up towards your transition shadow and towards the crease area. Now I am taking the shade Earth and I am going to use this shadow wet and I'm going to place that right at the center of my eyes first. Wherever your brush touches first is where the most pigment is going to be. So making sure you are putting that at the center of your eyes first and then blending left and right to get that diffused halo eye. And now I'm taking the shade Arendelle, which is the press glitter. I'm just taking a little bit of this and I'm just mainly focusing this right at the center of my eye on top of Earth. It's just going to enhance the halo eye slightly. And every time you turn your head, you're going to see those little glitter reflex. Now I am moving into the Elsa palette. I am taking the shade of Winter. I'm going to diffuse this all over my lower lash line from the outer corner right to the inner corner. I am really smoking this out and dragging it quite low because I do want this to peek through. And then I will take Spindrift and press this up against my bottom waterline to really define that lower lash. I'm going to blend it in towards winter and kind of get like a mixture of the two and that is going to be our lower lash color. Going back into the Anna palette, I am taking the shade Scooch in and I'm going to use this to highlight my brow bone and also my inner corners.
Now I'm just taking my liquid liner. I'm going to use that to line my lash line and then my gel liner to create my wing. For my wing today, I did take a bit of charade and smoke that out slightly. I just want it to be a little bit more diffused, but not too diffused, if you know what I mean. So I did just take that matte chocolate brown to help soften it out a little bit. Alright you guys, so this is the final look completed, the combination of Anna and Elsa. I think this is a good representation of Anna and Elsa. We got Anna on the top lid and then Elsa on the bottom lid, but they really work well together. I actually really like this color combination. At first I was a little bit skeptical, but I think at the end with the lashes, full face on, I think it came together pretty nicely. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this final look. Alright guys, so this is going to complete today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up for me and let me know what you guys think down below as well. Let me know what you guys think of the collection, of the movie, of the three looks. Just let me know your thoughts down below on Frozen. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye!